Huntington Beach for a few years. Look at the mandible, this black card hopefully helps illustrate it better. There's a little excessive wear here, a little high in this area on the premolars. So that could be all leveled out and restore the mouth back to normal function. And you can see it's a little high in back here as well. That would probably be taken down just slightly. So this arcade could be balanced again. That's what we're looking for. There's also another thing we look for, which is the angle. There's an angle of these arcades that need to be slightly sloped downwards, so it's higher on the middle and they change so when we're balancing the height of the molars we're also correcting the angle at, at the same time. What I want to talk about now is uh, uh, table angles. I touched on it briefly but I want to talk about it a little bit more extensively. This is the upper jaw which is a maxilla and uh, these are the sharp points that most people have filed off when they get their horse's teeth folded with a file where they just rasp, rasp some of the sharp points off. Now taking off these sharp points are important. They will aggravate the horse's soft tissue and will, they will perform not as well if uh, these points are there. So it's important to take that off, but the horses use, do not use the sides of their teeth to eat with. It's their occlusal surface that they use to eat with. We don't use the sides of our teeth to eat with, it's our occlusal surface where the teeth meet to process food to actually chew. The difference between our teeth and a horse's is this surface changes and there's an angle that you want on a horse's teeth. So if you look, this would be horizontal, and the teeth, horse's teeth are not level. There's actually a slight dip uh, on the upper. Probably should hold it this way, because that's the way you'd look at it on a horse. They're angled slightly this way. And on the lower jaw, it's the opposite. They go from the bottom up. So this, this angle is important to be maintained. Now when you're rasping the sharp points off a horse's teeth with a typical file flow, they're not addressing this area. They're just they're basically not touching it at all in most cases. There are some practitioners who use only files that are actually very good. They're far and few between. There are a, a, a wide cross section of files you can buy to make corrections on occlusive surfaces. Uh, it does take a little bit longer. It can be done properly, um, but generally speaking, most people who are doing file floating are just addressing the sharp points and not much else. Um, they might be doing a little bit of work on the canine teeth when a horse has canines. So I'm going to... This is a young horse. The angle's relatively okay. It's not as steep. It's almost it's a little straighter. So if you look at that one, it's not, it's not dipped down as much. It's a little straight, coming out a little straighter. What you want to find. We'll grab another skull. This and is just an old horse, and you can see the angle on this horse has dipped quite severely. It's uh, to hold it without dropping it. The angle is a lot steeper. Instead of being up like this, it's dropped down a lot lower because the teeth are a lot, a lot more worn out. So these occlusal surface angles limit the lateral, which is left to right, the lateral excursion movement. It limits the ability for them to process their teeth. They have to make these lateral movements in order to sweep back and forth to process the food. The steeper the angle, the less lateral movement they get. It actually it shortens the stroke of their uh, masticating their food. So you want that occlusal angle to be correct so they can get a full uh, proper stroke on their masticating cycle so they can grind the food down to the proper particle size which makes it easier for them to digest. Hello again, and today uh, I want to talk a little bit about eruption of the horse's teeth. Now horses have hypsodont teeth and humans we have brachydont teeth. Now let me explain a little bit what the difference is. Human teeth, once your permanent teeth come in, that's the teeth you have, they don't continue to grow, you, they're basically the teeth you have for your whole life. Horses teeth are a little bit different. I'm going to get some skulls and illustrate what horses teeth do to keep up with the wear and tear. What happens here? Horses have deciduous caps. These are these baby teeth here. These will actually are there just for the first um, about 
four and a half years of their life, four, four and a half years of their life, and these are the permanent teeth developing underneath. As these permanent teeth develop, they will push out the baby caps. This one here will get pushed out at uh, two and a half, the first deciduous cap will be removed, then three, and then four, and then this last one will be removed. If you look closely here, you can get a close up on that, there's a little it's almost like an embryonic state. It's a permanent tooth in, in the development stage, and that tooth will eventually keep growing inside the jawbone in the maxilla, which is the upper jaw. And here we have another one in back. This one, if I can get it out, it's always a little tricky. Try to get it out. Here it is. This little one here is a developing tooth as well. Now this tooth will eventually be, let me just pull this permanent teeth out here. These are the molars. This tooth will eventually be the same size as this one, but it's still developing. Uh, like I said, this is only a two-year-old horse, so it still has some time before that tooth starts to appear. And I wanted to show you the length of these teeth for another reason. These teeth are erupting out of the horse's jawbone its whole life. And what that means is the teeth slowly move out, about an eighth of an inch a year. They slowly move out because they're constantly wearing away. And then eventually, they will, in their lifetime, run out of teeth. So they've got quite a bit of tooth there. This is the crown, reserve crown, and the back end is called the root. That will just basically see them through their whole life. The thing with domestic horses compared to wild horses is a bit of a difference. A wild horse only lives till about um, late teens, possibly 20. Unusual for it to live as long as 20, but t usually late teens. And harsher conditions um, basically, you know, will take out a, a wild horse. A domestic horse will live into their 30s and sometimes 40s because we take care of them better, we take care of their needs, their medical needs, so they, they tend to last a lot longer. So um, uh, maintaining their teeth will basically help them with processing their food, it reduces the incidence of colic, and basically keeps them healthier overall. And there's a lot of areas with uh, bidding as well. When you're riding a horse, often when these deciduous teeth are erupting and they're losing these teeth, it's like a, you have a child and they're losing teeth, it's, it's irritating, there's pain involved, and that will cause a horse to be difficult. So I want to just tell people this for the reason that when they're working with their horse and the horse is possibly being not as good as it normally is, is to be a little understanding from about two and a half till about four, there's a lot going on back here with teeth coming in, making their way through the bone and, and these deciduous caps being removed and being replaced with the permanent teeth. That can be painful. Now here's a really tragic situation here. This skull I got, this horse here is about four. You can tell that because it just lost its deciduous caps here. It's got its uh, last of its permanent teeth coming in the back here. And this horse had the teeth erupt through the bone. It's called a dental cyst. And what that is, is when the permanent teeth are developing inside the maxilla and the mandible, which I'll show you in a minute, sometimes, in some cases, not often, they will actually break through the bone. And that causes a lot of pain for the horse. Now, interestingly enough, this horse's teeth were done by somebody actually who knew what they were doing. It's a very nice job. It's been properly balanced. There's a bit seat there. Um, my, my guess, is I'm just surmising now, is that the horse is probably having some difficulty eating. And this is something you probably wouldn't notice uh, visually unless you did an x-ray. There might have been some swelling. I would hope that if there was swelling that the person working on the horse would have brought it to the owner's attention and maybe not. But there is areas where these dental cysts actually ruptured and the teeth broke through the bone. That would cause a horse a lot of problems. Sometimes it gets very swollen here and it doesn't actually break through the bone like this did. And in that scenario you might have a horse that's very difficult when you're riding it. If they get tender in these areas, anything you put in their mouth, if you put a bozelle or a hackamore, any pressure here might cause